Hello everyone, uh, welcome back to the session on the design of combined footing RCC which is on slab type combined footing. So let us in this session, let us begin with uh, designing a numerical problem on combined footing. So to begin with, let us have a numerical problem. So the problem statement is as such. So we have two columns which is 230 by 300 and 300 by 230 that are spaced 2 meter apart and carry the loads of 280 kilo Newton and 350 kilo Newton respectively. If the SBC of the soil on which this foundation has to be designed is 140 kilo Newton per meter square, we need to suppose to design a rectangular combined footing. So the projection of the footing beyond the center line of the column carrying lower load is limited to 500 millimeters. Use M15 grade of concrete and FE415 grade steel. So to begin with, to design the combined footing for the given data, so first of all let us note down the parameters design parameters what we call which is required essentially to incorporate in our design calculations. The very first thing is the dimensions of the columns on which the load has to be transmitted through the foundation safely to the foundation soil. So now the first given data is size of column 1 which is 230 by 300 millimeters. And column number 2 is 300 by 230. So whereas the load which is acting upon column number 1 is F1 is equal to 280 kilo Newton and the load on column 2 is F2 and its magnitude is 350 kilo Newton. Presuming that the given load or service load. So let us carry out the design calculations. So now accordingly the other parameters which is given are the spacing between the columns, the center to center spacing which is 2 meters and the SBC of the foundation soil is 140 kilo Newton per meter square and the restrictions which is given as per the problem definition that is projection of footing from column number 1 C1 is equal to 500 millimeters that is S1. So now the grade of concrete is fixed as M15 grade. So hence the FCK characteristic compressive strength of concrete is 15 Newton per mm square and whereas the grade of steel is Fe415 grade so hence the yield stress is 415 Newton per mm square. So with this data so let us draw the plan dimensions along with other parameters geometrical parameters as per the data which is been given in the defined problem. So accordingly, so now S1 is equal to 500 millimeters and the dimension of column number 1 is 230 by 380 whereas column number 2 is 380 by 230. So hence we could see the dimensions be not similar, the orientation is not similar. Okay. So with this data, so we represent the geometrical plan and longitudinal sectional elevation of the given parameters in the combined footing. 
So now to start with the design, the first design step will be to arrive at the area of combined footing required. So now the area of footing required is based on the two parameters, one is on the load and the other one is on the capacity, bearing capacity of the foundation soil. So hence to determine the total load acting on the footing which is equal to F1 plus S F2 along with the additional self weight of the footing we are going to increase this total load F1 plus F2 with 10% to accommodate for the self weight of the footing concrete. So hence the final load on the footing will work out to be equal to 693 kilonewton inclusive of 10 percent of the self weight of the footing to be compensated. So whereas F1 plus F2 is equal to 630 which is the total of 280 plus 350 kilonewton. So now with this final load divided by the SBC of soil which is 140 kilonewton will give us a number that represents the area of footing required. So hence the area of footing required for this given data is 4.9 meter square which is rounded off to 5 meter square. So hence the area of footing required now it is fixed as 5 square meters. So now with this let us move on and define what exactly is the area of footing to be represented in our plan. So area of footing is nothing but the area of the shape of the diagram. So now the shape of the diagram in plan for our footing is a rectangle. is a rectangle so which is equal to B into L. So where L is the longitudinal dimension of the combined footing and B is the transverse direction of the footing in plan for the combined footing. So hence this 5 square meters is equated to B into L. So now we have a restriction as given in the problem where S1 is restricted to 0.5 meters that is 500 millimeters. So hence along the longitudinal dimension the first dimension has to be fixed because there is a restriction S1 is restricted. So hence we have some factor to move upon to fix or the dimension of the rectangular footing. So now let us see how to fix up the total length L for the combined footing. So now from the given parameter we can draw an equation which represents the total length of the footing required. So that gives us this 500 millimeters plus 2000 is the center to center spacing plus S2 which is unknown. So S2 is not defined. So once if we define what exactly to be S2 then the total length required can be arrived at. So let us see how to fix up S2. So to achieve this particular dimension spacing S2, we need to also look into the mechanics of the load transmission from pressure to the load which is acting upward on the combined footing. So to achieve this uniform upward soil pressure on the footing, we need to proportion the length of the footing in such a way that the half of the length should be equate, equated to S1 plus X. So what is X? 
x is nothing but the location of the resultant from the extreme left hand side of the column. So, this is x. So, now as we have defined x, so let us calculate this position of the resultant which is very very important to convert the non-uniform upward soil pressure into an uniform upward soil pressure. So, that we get the symmetrical pressure distribution the same pressure across the length of the combined footing. So, hence with this intention we need to first identify the dimension x. So, now how to determine this position x? So, the position x is nothing but the resultant force r acting exactly over the center of the combined footing. So, hence the center of the combined footing is nothing but our C g center of gravity of the footing in plan. So, that is in longitudinal direction. So, with this we can say that the uniformity is achieved between one end to the other end of the footing where the pressure P 1 is the same as pressure P 2. So, let us see how to identify this position C g. So, now the magnitude r resultant of the given loading condition is equal to the total load that is F 1 plus F 2. So, hence r is equal to 630 kilo Newton is the resultant force magnitude. So, now to determine the position x we need to take the bending moment about a point a where we have to consider only the action forces. So, the action forces are 280 kilo Newton, 350 kilo Newton and R. So, now suppose if I take the bending moment at point A. So, it is referred as taking bending moment about this point say R into S 1 plus x 280 into S 1 and 350 into 500 plus 2000 millimeters. So, with this the value of x is working out to be 1.111 meters. So, hence the position of the resultant force with respect to the center line of column 1 where 280 kilo Newton force is acting downwards is identified as 1.111 meters. So, now having known this and equating S 1 plus x is equal to L by 2 which is this value we can determine what is L required for the combined footing. So, hence 0.5 plus x, 0.5 is S 1, x is 1.11 meters. So, it should be equated to L by 2 where the line of action of the resultant force coincides with the center of gravity of the combined footing. So, with this condition we could see that L is equated to 3.22 meters. So, hence at this point of time we have achieved that the proportioning of the footing along the length longitudinal direction is being successfully completed having said that L is equal to 3.22 meters. So, now once L is fixed 
and having known what is the area required, we can find out the other dimension of the combined footing that is the transverse dimension in plan which is equal to B. So now, before getting into fixing the transverse dimension that is B, L required is 3.22 meters and the other dimension that is S2 which is not revealed in this design calculation so far can be identified as from this equation. So, this, we also know that L is equal to 0.5 times of 0.5 plus 2 plus S2 that is S1 plus 2 plus S2 and which is to be equated to 3.22 meters. So, therefore, S2 can be revealed as equal to 0.72 meters. So, now we have S1 is lesser than S2 because 280 is lesser than 350. So, hence the symmetry in the loading, the symmetry in the pressure upward soil pressure distribution is achieved. So, that the bending moment, the bending response will also be a symmetrical one. So, now having known L is equal to 3.22 meters, X is equal to 1.11 meters and S2 is equal to 0.72 meters and we have also defined that A required is 5.0 meter square, you can easily work out what is B required which has to be 5 by 3.22 and that is leading to around 1.552 meters which is rounded off to 1.6 meters. So, hence now the actual size of footing, area of footing provided is 3.22 into 1.6 rather than whatever is required is 5.0. So, now we have the area being increased which has been the actual provided. So, hence obviously the SBC should be always achieved as the safe bearing capacity when we have the load that divided by the actual area of footing provided which is 5.152 meter square. So, which is greater than 5.0. So, hence we are in more safer zone. So, with this the net upward soil pressure which is actually acting on the combined footing can be calculated by using the total load divided by area footing that is being provided. So, area footing that is provided is more than the required since obviously the net upward soil pressure is lesser than the safe bearing capacity of the soil. So, hence the soil foundation is safe. So, which is lesser than 140 kilo Newton per meter square. So, the actual pressure that is developed at the contact surface between the RCC combined footing and the foundation soil is 122.28 kilo Newton per meter square which is lesser than 140 kilo Newton per meter square. So, hence with respect to the bearing capacity of the soil, the foundation is safe. So, with this, a step forward in our design achievement is been concluded. So, that is with respect to the dimension fixity in plan for the given loading conditions along with looking at the foundation safety in terms of SBC. So, now let us move on further in determining the other dimension of the combined footing that is D depth, D depth. So, how do we do that? So, this is done based on our analysis. So, now what do we have? We do have the load 
we do have the pressure, then we can draw the pressure diagram acting on the combined footing. So now the pressure intensity is 122.28 which is rounded off to 123 kilo Newton per meter square which is same at both the ends and it is uniform throughout the length of the combined footing. So now let us convert this pressure intensity into pressure intensity into load intensity. So how do we do that? How do we convert the pressure into the load W kilo Newton per meter by using the equation where W is equal to pressure P multiplied by the other dimension that is B which is perpendicular to this board. So now B is equal to 1.60 meters and pressure P is 123 kilo Newton per meter square. So hence the load intensity along the length of the footing that is on the longitudinal direction of the footing is given as 195.68 kilo Newton per meter. So this is the load intensity which is uniform what we call it as uniformly distributed load along the length of the footing. So now once we have the loading diagram of the combined footing structural element then we can analyze it as a simple determinate structure. So hence the simple determinate structure can be analyzed by using a simple equations of equilibrium. By applying the equations of equilibrium we can analyze the structure and we can draw the shear force diagram and bending moment diagram to complete our analysis report. So now let us see how to analyze this loading structure. So we have the load intensity as 195.68 kilo Newton per meter which is rounded off to 196 kilo Newton per meter to eliminate this decimal values. So hence if 196 kilo Newton per meter is the upward soil force which is acting on the elemental structure which is a combined slab, combined footing slab which is acted upon by two column load acting downwards. So this profile is nothing but the elastic curve which is after bending due to the upward soil pressure. So now for this loading condition let us understand and draw the shear force diagram and bending movement diagram. So now let us start with shear force diagram. So now with the simple analysis, so let us apply sigma v is equal to 0 and determine what is the shear force at various critical locations. So now with the very first point that is A, shear force at A, shear force acting upwards or downwards is 0. So immediately after A, immediately after A, so that is exactly between A to B and immediately before the left of point B, we have 196 kN acting upwards. So hence the force intensity multiplied by the distance 500 millimeters is the total load that is acting upwards from point A to B. So hence VB left is 196 kN which is acting upwards multiplied by 0.5 meters that is 98 kN is the magnitude of shear force before the junction of point B towards the left. So that is 98 kN is the shear force. So now when it comes to the immediately right of B, immediately right of B along with the upward force 
we do also have the downward force of 280 kilo Newton acting downwards. So, hence considering this the shear force equation towards the right of B is equal to 196 into 0.5 upwards minus 280 kilo Newton acting downwards which is equal to the negative value of 182.0 kilo Newton acting downwards. So, hence the shear force comes down, shear force diagram comes down. So, next what is happening between B to C? So, B to C there is no force acting downwards, it is only upwards. So, hence the equation of shear force before the left of C will be minus 182 plus 196 into point sorry 2 meters or we can also calculate the shear force right from end D as we did it from the end A to B. So, both has to lead the same answer and it has to be convergent. So, now V A is equal to 0, shear force at A is equal to 0, shear force at the left of point B is 182 kilo Newton and shear force at right of C as I mentioned I can also calculate the shear force from this end. So, which is equal to 196.72 where 0 0.72 is this distance and it leads to the negative value because the shear force sign convention is either way it is opposite. So, considering the section towards the right, we have a different sign convention. Considering the section towards the same from the left hand side, we will have the opposite sign convention. So, hence it is minus. So, therefore, the shear force exactly towards right of C is working out to be minus 1400 and sorry min, minus 141.12 kilo Newton. So, hence to represent that in the shear force diagram this is what is 141.12 kilo Newton. So, now shear force at A is 0, shear force at the left of B is 98 kilo Newton, shear force at the right of B is minus 182 kilo Newton and shear force exactly at C towards the right of the point C is minus 141.12 kilo Newton acting downwards. So, now shear force exactly at C towards the left is along with 141 we do have the force coming downwards that is 350 kilo Newton that has to be added. So, which will work out to plus 208 0.88 kilo Newton. So, at this point of time we have completed the shear force values at critical locations starting from point A, B, C and D and this represents our shear force diagram for the entire combined footing along the longitudinal direction of the combined footing. So, now with the help of this we can identify where exactly is the minimum shear force or there is a transition between the change of shear force, force from the negative value to the positive value which is equal to x 0. x v 0 is the location where the shear force is absolutely 0 and it is linearly varying. So, hence to determine this the importance of this is to have the location of maximum bending movement in the given structural element. So, hence x v 0 is important for us to define where exactly the maximum bending movement will occur in our combined footing structural element. So, to summarize, so we have the solution till now defining what exactly is the shear force diagram along with 
the position that is represented for the zero shear force. So now let us develop the bending moment diagram. So we have the loading diagram. Let us start developing the bending moment diagram. So now bending moment at A is 0 since there is no force exactly acting on particular point A and even if it is acting then there is no perpendicular direction between that force to the point of calculation of the bending moment that is point A. So hence it is going to be 0. So bending moment at A is 0. So now what about bending moment at point location B? So bending moment at point location B is definitely not equal to 0 because we do have both magnitude of the load as well as the magnitude of the perpendicular distance to be incorporated in the bending moment equation to define the magnitude of bending moment at point B. So now bending moment at point B is given by the equation the force UDL W into 0.5 which is acting upwards for the cantilever portion between A to B. So hence this is the magnitude of load and the perpendicular distance is 0.5 divided by 2. So the force magnitude into the perpendicular distance is nothing but the bending moment. So hence the bending moment at point B is equal to plus 24.5 kilo Newton meters in magnitude. So which is positive, positive represents sagging. So since it is sagging upwards, so hence it is positive. So in our design calculations sagging bend moment is considered as positive and hogging moment sign convention is negative. So hence at point B the bending moment is plus 24.5 kilo Newton representing sagging bending moment. So let us move further. What is happening between B to C? and what is happening between C to D. So as we can see with the profile of the behavior of the combined footing in longitudinal direction. So both these zones are sagging and the portion between B to C is hogging. So hence the bending moment diagram should move from positive to negative from point B to point C and then from point C to D it has to be sagging. So this should be our shape of the bending moment. So now let us see how to achieve this bending moment. Okay. So similar to the shear force magnitude calculations. So now let us move from point D to C as we did it for A to B. So taking moment about point C considering these forces so it is W into 0 0.72 square divided by 2 is the magnitude of bending moment at point C. So which is given by this equation that is MC. Mc is equal to 196 into 0.72 is the magnitude of the force and this is the perpendicular distance measured from point C till the center of the line of action of this magnitude. So which is 0.72 divided by 2. So hence with this equation we have arrived at the magnitude of the bending moment exactly at point C is plus 50.80 kilo Newton meter. 50.80 kilo Newton meter and now again it is positive in nature because it is a sagging bending moment. 
So, hence with this we can conclude that bending moment at A is 0, bending moment at B is 24.5 kilo Newton meter. So, bending moment at C is 50.80 kilo Newton meter and bending moment at D is 0. So, hence we have done at this point of time with the bending moment calculation at B and C. So, now let us see what is happening between B and C. So, it has to convert or it has to change from positive to negative. So, now as I mentioned bending moment between B and C that is this zone is hogging. So, hence it has to be negative. So, what is the magnitude? The magnitude has to be defined based on the location unless and until we does not know the de define the location where exactly it is rising up, where exactly it has to rise up between B to C. So, that is this location. So, we need to define this particular value x value. So, hence the maximum value will be exactly at the distance x where shear force is minimum. So, now let us calculate what is this x value. So, we know that the shear force is minimum. So, hence write the equation for the shear force between A to C and equate that to 0 such that we can define what exactly is the x value. So, hence the equation becomes V x where x is unknown which should be equated to 0. So, therefore, 196 into 0 0.5, 196 is the magnitude acting upwards. So, 0 0.5 is this value minus 280 is acting downwards plus 196 into x 0 where x is measured from this center line of the column. So, hence in this equation is a linear equation where x can be determined which is an unknown because that is been equated to 0. So, therefore, x the distance measured from the load that is 280 kilo Newton load position is given as 280 minus 98 divided by 196. So, that is working out to be equate to 0 0.928 meters. So, now once the position is fixed, then I can write the equation for the bending moment at this considering either the left hand portion or on the right hand portion and I can determine what exactly is the magnitude of the maximum bending moment and I can draw the profile of the bending moment and complete the bending moment diagram for the given combined footing. Okay. Let us see how to write the equation for the maximum bending moment. So, now the maximum bending moment between B and C which occurs between B and C is exactly at the value x which is equal to V0. V0 is nothing but our shear force 0 location. So, x V0 is equal to 0 0.928 meters. So, therefore, the equation for the maximum bending moment at this location is 196 into 1 1.428 multiplied by 1.428 divided by 2. So, this is the magnitude of the load. So, this becomes the perpendicular distance between the load magnitude and the line of action of the particular section. Minus of 280 into 0 0.928 is coming from this particular value. 
So now 1.428 is the distance which is measured exactly from point E till x v0 where x v0 is the zero shear force location. So hence 0.5 plus 0.928 is going to be your 1.428 meters. So with this the maximum bending moment magnitude is given as 59.99 kilo Newton meter which is rounded off to 60 kilo Newton meter and which is an hogging bending moment which is represented as the negative value in the BMD diagram. So hence this is going to be the maximum bending moment M max which is along the longitudinal direction considering only the longitudinal direction of the combined footing. So now to conclude the analysis part of our design of combined rectangular slab type combined footing the bending moment diagram is as represented in the display and we can see that exactly at B it is sagging and exactly at the location where the shear force is 0 is hogging and then at C it is sagging. So now point A and point B we have the 0 bending moment. So hence the entire bending moment diagram is represented here for the longitudinal dimension of the combined footing. So now what is happening in the transverse direction? So along the transverse direction we know that it is a simple cantilever which is subjected to the upward soil pressure acting from the bottom. So hence the behavior is very simple. So now having known the pressure intensity of 123 kilo Newton per meter square acting along the both the direction that is longitudinal as well as transverse direction. So having done with the analysis for the bending along the longitudinal direction, uh, let us see what is to be done along the transverse direction. So now in the transverse direction we can see that the combined footing is a simple cantilever where on both the sides of the line of action of the column load is subjected to the sagging bending movement due to 123 kilo Newton per meter acting upwards. So hence W1 is equal to 123 kilo Newton per meter. So therefore M transverse, transverse bending moment is equal to 123 kilo Newton per meter into the distance square divided by 2, where the distance perpendicular distance is 0 0.8 meters. So since this is 1.6 divided by 2 which is equal to 0 0.8 meters. So therefore the transverse bending moment is going to be equated to plus 39.36 kilo Newton meter which is the sagging bending moment. So with this we can conclude the analysis part of the combined rectangular footing so which we are achieved the bending moment diagram as well as the shear force diagram for both the directions that is longitudinal direction and transverse direction. So now let us stop at this point of time and continue the remaining design in the next session. Thank you.